Ashlar Bellum is the leading developer of CAD and 3D modeling software on both Mac and Windows. In this three-part series of videos, we'll briefly introduce you to the key features that make the Vellum interface of Cobalt, Xenon, and Argon so appealing and easy to use. We'll start here with the user interface window and the drafting assistant. Part two covers using the trackball. Finally, part three is the show hide window and the design explorer. In these videos are a variety of tools that are commonly used in the creation process. So let's get started with the user interface window and the drafting assistant. We'll begin with the interface window. To make things a little easier, let's close the Design Explorer, the Trackball, and the Show Hide window. We'll cover those later on in this series. As it looks now, the window has six basic areas. These include the Drawing Area, the Menu Bar, the Tool Palettes, the View Palette, the Message Line, and the Status Line. The drawing area is the most obvious and most important part of the Ashlar Vellum workspace. This is where your project is created. The menu bar contains all of the pull-down menus and commands that Ashlar Vellum's modeling products offer. The tool palettes contain creation and editing tools that are used to create the model. When the program is first opened, three tool palettes automatically appear. Access other palettes from the window menu on the menu bar. The view palette shows the tools used to navigate the display of the model in the drawing area. It zooms, pans, and rotates the view. It toggles between view modes such as wireframe, or shaded view. It enables surface analysis and turns on and off perspective for display. In the top left corner is the message line. This area prompts you for the next step when using any tool. For instance, when the single line tool is selected from the tool palette, the message line says, single line, pick beginning point. The program tells you what it needs to perform the task. This area also displays options available with the tool. Finally, the status area at the bottom of the screen displays a variety of data about the current state of the model. The status line has a lot going on in it. Let's take a minute and examine one area at a time. The status area has five different parts. The region status indicator, the coordinate system access icon, the status line, the work layer indicator, and the location indicator. First, we'll look at the regen status. A regen, or regeneration, is needed when the relationship or constraint between a parent and child object pair has not been fully resolved. This may happen intentionally, depending on which tools are being used. For instance, if a rectangle is created and extruded so that it becomes a block, the block is linked to that rectangle. If that block is moved without using the rectangle used to create it, the links between the two may become unresolved. Most of the time, regens are automatically executed after a change, but if it is unable to do so, the regen status indicator will turn red. In such a case, all that is necessary is to click on the indicator and the program will resolve links. The coordinate system access icon lets you choose either the default global coordinate system or one of your own specification. It displays the type of work plane currently being used and defines the work planes on which geometry gets created. For simple models, this tool is rarely used, but it is handy for advanced modeling with complex geometry. The status line is filled with data entry fields. This is what it looks like when the single line tool is selected. The information in this area changes with respect to the tool being used. This area inputs data for the geometry. The keyboard can be used if desired. When clicking in the drawing area, the information is automatically filled into the appropriate field. The work layer indicator displays the active work layer. 
all new geometry created is placed on this layer. Toggle between layers by clicking on the arrows on both sides of the indicator. Finally, the location indicator shows the X, Y, and Z coordinates of the pointer while it is in the drawing area. That's the overview of specific areas of the Ashlar Bellum interface window. Now, let's move on to the Drafting Assistant. Ashlar Bellum's patented Drafting Assistant is probably the most loved feature in our software. It has been often copied but never duplicated. Let's show you what we mean. To draw a perfectly horizontal line, click on the Line tool and come down into the drawing area and click the starting point. Move the mouse until the horizontal dotted line appears showing the points are aligned. Click the end point. Now let's draw another line that's exactly the same length, starting and ending on the same points along the x-axis as the other line. Come over here and just brush over the end point of this line with the cursor to alert the drafting assistant. Move straight down the y-axis to place the point. To know exactly where to end, move the mouse up and brush the other end of the previous line to alert the drafting assistant to this area. And move straight down till the dotted line tells you it's exactly horizontal. Now click. It's easy to draw horizontal lines matching endpoints or from the middle of this line to this point over here. The drafting assistant tries to make the next move obvious. The drafting assistant can be customized to your needs. For example, we could set it up to tell us where the 10% marks are along this line. Let's highlight this and delete it so we can move on to a somewhat more sophisticated application of the drafting assistant. We're going to draw a larger circle here and a smaller circle over here. Selecting the line tool and moving over to the circle, notice that when we brush the circle it says on. Holding down the left mouse button and continuing around the circle, we strike the tangent line. Bring it down toward the other circle till it says tangent and click again. In other CAD packages, this is very difficult to do. We can also do tangent lines across this way and this way. Center point to center point is no problem. The drafting assistant makes it easy to do. Now we'll delete these lines and do some solid modeling. If we display the trackball, we'll see that we're in top view. Let's use the trackball menu and change that to trimetric. Selecting the block primitive tool, let's create a simple block. Let's make another one over here and make it red using the pen menu to change the color. Now when we come back and click on this block, the drafting assistant knows where all these points are, which is really convenient. So take this endpoint and match it to the endpoint over here. Now we'll make this one part using the Boolean Add tool. Click on this block and click on this one to make it one part. Using the trackball to move it, you can see that it's one part. Next, put a 3 quarter inch diameter hole right in the center of the top. The drafting assistant makes this easy. Select the hole tool. Using the countersink hole, make sure it specifies through and change the diameter to be 0.75 or 3 quarters of an inch. To get it right in the middle, click on this face and select it from the ambiguity box. Then alert this midpoint and alert this midpoint and when you get the intersection, click. We've just created a countersink hole without doing any math. The drafting assistant is incredibly powerful and convenient. It's a great deal of the magic behind the Vellum interface. Thanks for watching this series on the key features of the Ashlar Vellum 3D modeling programs. Be sure to view parts two and three for other important features that give Cobalt Xenon and Argon software, what we call Vellumness, that extra edge in intuitive usability.